What's going on, YouTube? Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness. What's going on, YouTube? I'm that Cologne Guy E, and this is Simply Put Sense. I'm so glad you guys are here. Um, I wanted to talk to you all about an amazing, amazing topic. Um, it's spring. It's an amazing, an amazing day in New York in spring. And um, I wanted to share with you all some really, really amazing fake fragrance, excuse me, fake fragrances, spring fragrances um, for you all to consider. And rather than doing like what everyone else does, which is talk about the same old, same olds, I wanted to share with you all some very unique smelling fake fragrances that will have you not only smelling amazing, but interesting and unlike other people in your world. Because I don't like to give you guys suggestions that make you smell basic and make you smell common. You know, I don't want you to smell common. I want you to smell so good that people want to know what you're wearing rather than walking up to you knowing what you've got on your skin. So um, <laughs> let's get into that. So what are you all wearing today? What's going on, Mitch? How are you? I'm very well, thanks. I hope you're great. Um, I'm hanging in, brother. Cannot complain. Um, how you doing, Chikara? Thank you so much for coming through. I appreciate you, as well as King Ted. Thank you so much, King Ted. What's going on with you as well? Long time. Thank you so much for coming on the channel. Really appreciate you. Um, so guys, I'm curious, what spring fragrances are you all looking forward to wearing? I am really, really curious. There are so many beautiful fragrances for the spring, and um, it's fascinating how so many of us tend to ignore some really, really great options because, you know, bestsellers <laughs> Best sellers, they tend to uh, distract us. Um, so I was curious, what fragrances have you all been considering? What are you interested in wearing this spring? Um, what fragrances are you interested in buying? Ha, Professor X, good to see you. Glad to see you again, Mr. E. Good to be in the live stream wearing Spark by Liz Claiborne, underrated for sure. Spark by Liz Claiborne. Wow, I haven't heard of that scent in ages. <laughs> Liz Claiborne is ab absolutely, you know, a fragrance brand that a lot of people do not f focus on and consider at this point. Um, Polo Earth, very, very interesting. I smelled Polo Earth um, last year when it dropped and I was blown away. Actually, I smelled it a little bit before it came out because I used to work for L'Oreal back then. <laughs> and, um, uh, Polo Earth was coming out. It was such a big deal for uh, L'Oreal. L'Oreal was so excited to put that fragrance out because it was like the first Ralph Lauren fragrance that was sustainably created. Um, and by the way, guys, please forgive the background noise. Um, I'm in a shared space, so forgive me. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, um, so it is an amazing fragrance. Very, very clean, very easy to wear, very light. Uh, wish it was a little bit more strong, but yeah really dug Polo Earth. Ah, Rosia Elysium. I mean, Rosia's Elysium. <laughs> Rosia's Elysium is one of my favorite fragrances for warm weather, period. Um, you cannot go wrong. Cologne Parfum, Parfum, either one is literally next level beautiful. Um, you'll always smell amazing in Elysium. Um, Polo Earth is a very natural, and underrated scent, especially when it's warm outside. I appreciate that, J3. Uh, Polo Earth I thought was really, really good. I definitely think it's one of their better options, and I have to give Polo credit for actually coming out with something new because it seems like all these brands, they just do 
flankers of something that's already popular so they don't have to like really risk anything you know but it's I feel like we're getting bored and getting tired of flankers as a as an audience you know um because it doesn't really smell that different from the original it's usually just a slight tweak and then we have like Ralph Lauren purple you know um polo purple and you know it's basically polo blue but with lavender you know it's just Womp womp, but <laughs> but um, I do have to give Polo Earth. Uh, I have to give the Ralph Lauren or Polo brand um, some credit for at least coming out with something new and different than what was expected or what was already out. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Uh, but guys, I wanted to share with you all some amazing fragrances that I think you should be considering or getting your nose on for the summer. And, excuse me, for the spring. Um, I wanted to share with you some really awesome options that don't get a lot of attention. This way, you can smell amazing, but not common. Again, that's the focus of this channel, to have you smelling your best, but not smelling like the rest. I think that's just boring and tired to smell like every other person. It's literally like walking out of your house and seeing everyone wearing your outfit and just going along with your day. Personally, again, if that was me, I'd be going back upstairs, changing so that I don't have to look like the rest of the world. But that's just me. You know, I prefer not to like fit in or kind of like, you know, I don't like to fit in. I like to, you know, be myself and stand out and be interesting and unique and, you know, have people um, asking me what I'm wearing. And, I, you know, I just don't want to smell like an ex or a dad, you know, so. I wanted to share with you some really awesome spring options that will be beautiful, unique, not too expensive because some folks, <laughs> some folks have this mindset that ever since I've been working at Bergdorf Goodman, I'm too bougie for the designer fragrances <laughs> or for fragrances that are, you know, well-priced, but that's not the case. Um, I just have higher standards now and not every designer fragrance meets that standard at this point. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it's not how much you spend, it's what you're spending your money on that matters. Um, and that's just the way I feel about everything. I'll spend $20 on an amazing fragrance and wear it if it's awesome. I'll spend three, four, five hundred dollars on an amazing fragrance if it smells awesome. I just need to make sure that if I'm buying a new scent, it makes my collection better. That's the main focus and the only focus at this point for me. Um, so I wanted to share with you all 10 fragrances and this is a very interesting top 10 list. I've never done a top 10 list live before. I usually create videos and edit them and you guys see pictures, but today, guess what guys? I got bottles. <laughs> I'm going to be showing you all bottles uh, for the first time in my fragrance video experiences. I've never done top 10 videos with actual bottles because I always drop fragrances. Like you see my videos, like you guys know I am very, very slippery fingered when it comes to perfumes. I'm always dropping them and um, I've broken a couple of bottles in my lifetime um, because I'm just a clumsy dude. So um, <laughs> I will be holding bottles and hopefully not dropping any of them to break them today. I would be really frustrated by that. Um, but yeah, anyway. So we're gonna start and yeah, let's see what other people have been saying. The weather is cooling down over here in Sydney, Australia, but, I'll, but I always love spring scents. Really enjoy Original Vetiver by Abel Perfumes and Galan Heritage EDT. Um, I, love, I love Galan's Vetiver. Galan's Original Vetiver, insane, very, very clean, very beautiful, but it was reformulated really, really bad to be more modernized and to be a little bit more basic. If you want to smell an amazing vetiver that will be absolutely like impressive and like, whoa, you have to consider Roja Vetiver. You have to. Or also um, Vetiver Extraordinaire by Frederick Mall. Those are amazing vetiver fragrances. Um, vetiver by Roja is a little bit more traditional, but a lot more elegant, a lot more expensive smelling. Vetiver Extraordinaire is a little bit more modern, a lot less classic styled, but still great. Um, both fragrances you cannot hate on. I did not add those scents on my list, although like Gelan, like Gelan's Vetiver would be on this list, but I didn't add any of those fragrances on the list because Gelan I consider designer at this point, 
and the other two brands, their vetivers were way too expensive, so I didn't include them. Also, you know them, so it was not going to be unique for this list. So I wanted to add things that, again, are not being focused on or talked about as often. Uh, let's see what Sin for the Skin Activator saying. Long time no see. Where have you been? Your absence has been felt in the fragrance world, brother. Thank you so much, Sin for the Skin Activate. Um, I've been literally, you know, so I've been I've been in a lot of I've been in a lot of places. Currently, I'm at Bergdorf Goodman. Please come to the store. Introduce yourself. I'd love to meet you. Um, I've been working here for the last, I guess you could say, seven months. Previously, I was working at Atelier Cologne, the flagship boutique, as a manager. Um, missed that store, missed that brand, but on to cooler and better things, I have to say. Um, but yeah, that's where I've been. I've been working really, 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 really hard, but I'm back now. I've been doing live streams every Wednesday at 6 p.m. in Bergdorf Goodman. Um, this will be my 11th episode. So if you want to check out my other ones, please do. I do them every week on Wednesdays now at 6 p.m. Uh, and I would really, really appreciate you to check it out. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, send for the skin activate. I'm so glad that you're checking out my videos again. Thank you so much. Um, and the art of curating a fragrance collection courtesy of E. Yes. <laughs> curating a fragrance collection is important. It's really important. Don't add everything to your collection. Not everything is worthy to be there. So um, I like to be very, very deliberate with what I'm getting. And I, again, don't want to smell like everyone else. Um, so guys, let's get into this list. Um, the number 10 fragrance on this spring list, and I guess you could say this is going to be a niche list. Every fragrance on this list is niche. Nothing here is designer. Again, nothing here is considered popular. Nothing on this list is over $300, or actually I think nothing is over $200. 250 probably the most. So yeah, just a few more dollars more than Sauvage Elixir. You guys could definitely, definitely get all of these. Um, they're not out of the range of, they're not crazy. They're not going to put major dents in your pocket. Um, but when you smell them, they smell like they could because they all smell extremely expensive. They all smell extremely niche. And you're not going to smell again common. Uh, so number 10 from the Fragrance House. <sighs> and I love saying this brand's name. <laughs> Santa Maria Novella. The fragrance is called... Melagrano. Melagrano means pomegranate. And I got to tell you, this fragrance is insane. It was launched in 1965. It is probably the most classic smelling scent on this list. But I added it on this list because to me, Melagrano is an absolute amazing fragrance. It should not be, uh, it should be a lot more known than it is. And the people who have great taste and people who know niche perfumery, Melagrano is considered an amazing option. But I wanted to share it with you all. It's an amazing fragrance. Santa Maria, Santa Maria Novella is one of the oldest fragrance brands in the world. Um, it's actually named after the first friar or the first man who created a cologne in Cologne, Germany. Um, he is, his name was, I think, um, Farina, son, I, don't, I can't remember. It's, it's something like this. But anyway, <laughs> um, this house is absolutely awesome. It's very, very interesting, though, because there are so many fragrances that this brand makes. A lot of them do smell old school. This fragrance is probably one of the most, I would say, timeless options that they offer. Melagrano smells beautiful. It is a chypre. And it is made for men and women. Anyone can wear this fragrance. And it has um, notes of pomegranate, ylang ylang, bergamot, orange, rose, cyclamen, which is also a floral. It has mid notes of oak moss, orris, root, vetiver, fern, tobacco, Virginia, cedar, and hawthorn. And the base notes are apopanax, French labdanum, patchouli, amber, and vanilla. This scent is extremely complex. When you smell it, all those ingredients come to you. And I have to tell you, it smells complex. It smells clean, slightly fruity, green, perfect for the spring. This fragrance is definitely a spring banger. It will kill 
when it's warm out. And um, I just love the clean, powdery, fresh vibe that it has. Like, this is a fragrance that I could dress up or down, doesn't matter. Men and women can equally wear it. It doesn't smell pretty, it doesn't smell handsome. Although it might lean a little bit on the handsome side, so anyone I believe can easily put this on their skin and smell pretty awesome. Um, I have to say I absolutely love this fragrance just because it is an um, old school scent done in a way that could be easily, easily trans, um, easily worn today with no issue. It smells old school, but it's modern, it's timeless, it's beautiful. Melagrano by Santa Maria Novella an amazing, amazing pomegranate scent. Pomegranate is one of my favorite ingredients and fragrance. It's not that easy to find them, but I like things like pomegranate. I like things like plum. I love dark berry full fruit. So I love fragrances that feature scents like that. And yeah, Melagrano is amazing. Um, number nine is from the house of Eight and Bob, and you all know Eight and Bob. <laughs> Eight and Bob is insane. It's an, arom it's an aromatic. Very, very beautiful fragrance, launched in 2012. Um, the fragrance notes in this scent, cardamom, ginger, lemon, and bergamot. Middle notes of cedar, guyac wood, hazelnut, and labdanum. And the base notes are ambergris, vanilla, sandalwood, and patchouli. A and Bob is business. This fragrance is green. It's a business suit in a bottle. Like when I smell this fragrance, I think this dude is making money. This dude has awesome taste. This dude is just doing well in life. And Aiden Bob just easily, easily, easily fits that man. Um, this is also a fragrance that I could easily wear all year. It defies the season in my opinion, but I think it works perfectly for the spring because of that green, because of that greenness of the scent. It is just next level. I love guyac wood, I love cedar, I love ginger, I love cardamom, all ingredient notes that I absolutely, absolutely look for in a lot of fragrances. So this scent just really, really threw me off. A lot of people say that this fragrance was worn by John Kennedy or Bobby Kennedy. It's always a Kennedy that wore the Eight and Bob fragrance, but I have to be honest, I think that's like a bullcrap story. Um, regardless though, I can easily see a Kennedy wearing a scent like this because it just smells elevated. It smells modern, but it also smells classic at the same time. Um, it just smells amazing. I think women could easily wear this also, although you would have to appreciate a more masculine leaning fragrance to appreciate Eight and Bob, but Eight and Bob is really, really great stuff. Um, love, 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 love. Um, I put a major dent in this bottle. I was gifted this by Tiff Benson. Thank you so much, Tiff. You're the best. <laughs> um, love Eight and Bob. Love this scent. If you want to smell Unique, interesting, a scent that'll last all day. Seven hours, six to eight hours, depending on your chemistry. Eight and Bob is a great, great option. It smells grassy. It smells perfectly suitable for the spring. This is a fragrance you literally could wear all year, as I mentioned. In the summer, I would probably wear it at night, but you could wear this all year, and Eight and Bob is just good stuff. Number nine, that was Eight and Bob. Um, number eight, it's from a brand that I've never talked about on this channel, except for a couple of weeks ago where I was gifted it by an amazing client of mine who wanted to offer it to me as a gift and I was blown away because it is like an absolutely awesome gift. Um, so this fragrance is from the house of Le Jardin Retrouvé and this fragrance is called Mousse Arashiyama. And the first time I paid, <laughs> first time I talked about this fragrance, I couldn't get the name right for nothing. So yes, I worked on it. Um, <laughs> Muse Arishiyama is an amazing take on Fig. This fragrance house, the last fragrance this brand came out with was like 40 years ago. This brand is so, so classic and old school. But this fragrance, even though it does have an old school vibe, you know, in the Melograno, Santa Maria Novella kind of world, um, I have to say, Moose Arashiyama is a beautiful, beautiful experience. It is amazing. It's an aromatic green scent for men and women. And it was launched in 2021. The nose behind this fragrance is a person named Maxence Moot or Mout. The top notes of this scent is bergamot, incense, and mastic or lentisk. Or lent, lent, lentisk. Ah, lentisk. 
Interesting. Basically, that's powdery notes. So it'll add a powderiness to a fragrance. Mid notes, fig leaf, water notes, and fig. Base notes, vetiver moss, and cedar. It is amazingly beautiful, amazingly unique. If you're someone who likes classic styled fragrances, you have to consider this fragrance. It's very inexpensive compared to other scents on this list, but it doesn't smell like it. You would honestly think this fragrance was worth two to three hundred dollars if you were to smell it and you can easily buy a size like this for under 50 bucks, which doesn't make any sense in my opinion when you smell it. It smells like it was very, very upscale, very, very niche, very green, very beautiful. The Jardin Retrouvé Mousse Arashiyama. This fragrance on me lasts about five to six hours. I wouldn't say a lot of the fragrances on this list are beasts, but again, fragrances made for the spring, they're clean. They're not meant to be beasts, you know? They're meant to smell amazing for the moments you need them for. And I would just suggest just adding some in a sprayer and taking it with you if you really need to refresh your scent. But at least they'll get to the four to five hour mark, the least. So all of these I think are options that will fit people who like fragrances that last, but they're not gonna be beast scents that will fill the room when you walk into it. But yeah, this is an amazing, unique option. No one talks about it because no one knows it exists. And I'm so grateful that Simone, I love you. Thank you so much for putting me onto this. You're the best. Thank you so much, Simone, for putting me onto this fragrance. You will definitely want to know that this exists. If you're into fig, if you're into green fragrances, if you like spring scents, you're not going to smell like no one wearing this scent. Mousse Arashiyama by Le Jardin Retrouvé. Amazing fragrance. Okay, guys. Moving on, we're going to number seven. Number seven is from a house we all know and a lot of us love. Um, I have to say I, I'm a late bloomer to this brand because you know I'm just, I've been getting into fragrances that are more niche over the last four years. And um, yeah, this brand is absolutely beautiful. Um, some of my, one of my favorite fragrances of all time came from this house. And the fragrance brand is called Andy Tower. The fragrance is L'Air des Alpes Suisse or L'Air des Alpes Suisse by Tower Perfumes. Now this fragrance is an amazing amber witty scent. Um, anyone can wear it as well. Um, it came out in the year 2019 and Andy Tower himself created this scent. And when I smell this fragrance, it makes me think of the, f <laughs> the Swiss Alps. Like I think of like Mountain air, snow caps, you know, snow capped mountains, mountain air, briskness, fresh cleanness. Um, but I think this fragrance would easily translate to a spring scent without question. And that has a lot to do with the ingredients in the fragrance. So this fragrance has air accords, granite, alpine herbs, powdery notes, green notes, alpine, well, lily. Uh, spicy ingredients, and then woods, larch, timber, beech wood. And it just smells really, 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 really interesting. Slightly sweet, slightly fresh, slightly witty, very, very unique, very interesting. I haven't smelled anything like this, okay? Le des Alpes Suisse is basically, um, I guess you could say, a... A, in addition to a collection that Andy Tower has created, um, L'Air de Désert Marocain was the first one, and then he did the core version of that, uh, which is a very heavier version of Le Désert Le Désert Marocain. <laughs> I don't remember the name. Something like that, though. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love, uh, I absolutely love L'Air des Alpes Suisse. It's just really, really beautiful, very clean, very easy to wear. You're not trying hard, but you smell unique. You smell original. You don't smell like other people. I love this scent. It's just very brisk. Very, very brisk. <laughs> like, when you read the name and you smell the fragrance, you're like, wow, he really nailed it. Um, it really makes you feel like... It really makes you feel cool. I would wear this easily in the summer also because I feel like this fragrance has a cooling effect. When I smell it, I think brisk, clean, fresh, cooler air. I don't think warm, desert air. So I really do appreciate where this fragrance goes. I love what it does. 
And I have to say, I think it's very, very attractive. Um, very, very attractive. Uh, so yeah, number seven, Lea des Alpes Suisse by Andy Tower. Number six, <laughs> you guys are gonna kill me. <laughs> number six, I don't have the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, hmm, it's from a brand called Aroma by Costa Brazil, and it's an amazing witty scent. Actually, let me go, and I'm going to just pull the fragrance up for you so you can at least see what the bottle looks like, you know, because I don't know what I was thinking by not bringing it. I had it, but I don't have it now. Um, but there is a fragrance from... Costa Brazil, and it's called Aroma, Eau de Parfum. It's just under $200. And I want you to see this brand. First of all, Costa Brazil is a New York based brand that is extremely, extremely, extremely sustainable, clean. The products that they use and the ingredients that they use are very, very clean, very, very easy to experience. You're not going to get headaches, itchy skin, or any other issue. Um, but they came out with a fragrance called Aroma. And it comes in this really, really cool wooden, like, um, like a wooden container where the fragrance pops in. And they are rechangeable, so you can keep the wooden box and just pop that in and out with no issue. And I'm about to share my screen with you all now. So you can at least see what it looks like. And I should be checking out what your comments are so I make sure that things are working the way they should. How you doing, guys? Thank you so much for checking out this live. Let me show you this. Um, so, cool. So this is um, Costa Brazil. And... This is the brand, this is the fragrance that I want you all to check out. It's called, it's called Aroma. <laughs> uh, and it, it's very, 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 very interesting, a very unique fragrance. This is definitely on the darker side. You could easily wear this in cold weather, but I really, really, really love this fragrance and I'm gonna be getting it to be wearing it in the spring. This fragrance features top notes of white jungle flora, flowers, uh, Brazil orange oil, pink pepper, and I'm noticing pink pepper is in a lot of stuff lately. Um, love pink pepper, by the way. Adds a freshness to a fragrance while giving it a spicy effect as well. Um, grapefruit zest is in the top note of aroma. Mid notes of geranium bourbon or bourbon geranium. Uh, nutmeg oil, myrrh, and I love the scent of myrrh, love the scent of frankincense. Um, I would have definitely been one of the three kings offering Jesus one of those ingredients because I love, love, love them. Uh, base notes of cedarwood, atlas, uh, vetiver, plant-based musk, which is usually ambrette, uh, amber accord, cypriol, and patchouli. That cypriol that patchouli, that vetiver, that must, that amber, gives this fragrance a really interesting leathery type of vibe towards the base. But before you get to that warm, woody base, you're gonna be greeted to really interesting green notes such as geranium, white florals, um, pink pepper. It's just a really, really unique experience. I love the way this fragrance smells. Um, you're not going to smell like other people when you wear it. I also find that it doesn't project too much, but it lasts for a long, long time. So you'll notice it on your skin for seven, eight hours into your day, but it's not going to fill the room, which is not too bad for me, especially when it gets warmer as the months continue. Um, so Costa Brazil Aroma is a really, really beautiful fragrance. The way the brand describes it is, an evo it's evocative of the Amazon at dusk, at dawn, excuse me. This <laughs> central unisex scent is reminiscent of the natural resin that grows in the jungles of Brazil, a blend of white jungle flora, patchouli, cedarwood, vetiver, amber accords. It gives off an exotic smoky scent of fresh earth, flowers, and crushed leaves. Absolutely 100% true. A lot of times I'll read copy from a lot of brands and I'm like, what the heck are they talking about? But this makes perfect sense. 
um, a beautiful, 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 beautiful note, a uh, beautiful experience um, that's warm, that's green, that's very, very interesting and very unique. Again, not smelling like others. I can imagine when people smell this on you, they want to know what you're wearing for sure. Aroma by Cota Brazil. <laughs> great, great option. Um, and that's number six. Now, number five, this is a brand that you all have definitely heard of before. You've smelled before. You've seen this line. You've heard about this brand. Everyone who loves fragrance or who is a fragrance enthusiast knows about this Turkish house. And I should be giving it away just by saying Turkish house. But you all know the brand. It's Nishan. And the fragrance is Colonize. Colonize by Nishan is a citrus scent. It was launched in 2018. The top notes are bergamot, green tea, jasmine, and lemon. Middle notes are grapefruit, lily of the valley, and the base notes are neroli, musk, and vetiver. This fragrance, you can easily wear this when it's warm, hot, summer, spring. It doesn't matter. You're going to smell amazing in Colonize, and I love this fragrance. They also have a saffron version, which I would wear typically in the fall. But this version, whew, this pops off your skin. It smells brisk. It smells crisp. It smells like an amazing walk through a, through a forest in the daytime. It is absolutely amazing. There is a lot of beautiful, beautiful things happening in Colonize. I really love the green tea, especially. You really get it in this scent. The green tea is very, very obvious, and it adds to the greenness of the fragrance. It definitely has a green style, even though there's a ton of citrus in this fragrance. The bergamot is very, very, very prominent, along with the lemon. But you don't get, like, lemon pledge. You don't get, like, you know, any... You know, it doesn't remind me of like a household cleaning product. And it shouldn't because it's a niche fragrance and Nishan doesn't do household cleaning products. <laughs> um, Nishan is, in my, in my opinion, one of the best niche brands over the last few years. Everything they do is interesting. Everything they do is well made, well blended. They put a lot of effort and, and energy behind their scents. And um, I just think that this brand really, really knows what they're doing and does things properly. Um, Nishan. <laughs> awesome. I don't know if you've all smelled Colonize, but if Colonize, but if you haven't, you really, 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 really need to smell this fragrance. It is, um, it is profoundly beautiful. You can wear that also in the summer, but I really, really love it as a spring option for me. Um, I just find that the vetiver really, really, really clicks on my skin, and it just reminds me of a spring day when I smell it. So, yeah, Colonize by Nishan, absolutely amazing fragrance, number five. That scent also lasts on me about five to eight, five to six to seven, excuse me, five to seven hours. Depends. If it's a really, really hot day, I notice that that fragrance stays on a little longer. Um, it just seems to push a little bit more when it's a warm day. On colder days, uh, I could still wear that fragrance, but it'll be a little bit closer to the skin. And it'll evaporate a lot faster. So anywhere between five and seven hours, I would say. And for a clean, freshy, that is absolutely awesome. Um, this fragrance will smell amazing. If it gets on your clothing, it'll stick. So yeah, Nishan's Colonize number five. Now, guys, we're getting in the top four fragrances that I wanted to offer you all as options for amazing niche scents that are under 200 bucks, 250 the most. Um, but honestly, there's in that Sephora price range, you know, um, Joe Malone, um, uh, Dior Sauvage Elixir. If you could buy Dior Sauvage Elixir, you literally can afford all of these fragrances. I'm going to just put it that way. Um, so we've done number five. Number four is from a brand that is number four is from a brand um, that very few people talk about and focus on as well. Actually, I've never heard of this brand even on YouTube before. And hold on, really, really quick. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can't help, guys. So sorry. <laughs> Um, normally it's never like this, but it's just, you know, we, there's a lot of things happening. There's, um, people are, 
unboxing a lot of things. You know, there's some amazing brands that are unboxing their new inventory that came into the store today. So that's that's what you're hearing. But forgive me, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> this will this won't happen as often. I won't say it won't happen again, but it won't happen as often going forward. So just bear with me, all. Um, anyway, the next fragrance is from a house called Mont Sillage. Um, Mont Sillage is a really, really interesting brand that very few people talk about. And I really wanted to offer you all an amazing fragrance that's called Aviation Club. And it looks like this. Mont Sillage Aviation Club. Guys, this fragrance is amazing. I first found out about this fragrance from a friend of mine, Evan. My boy Evan put me onto this fragrance and I'm so grateful that he did. He owned it and um, at the time his girlfriend worked at Twisted Lily and that's where I got my bottle, Twisted Lily, back in the day. Remember that brand? <laughs> Remember that store? Um, they're online only at this point, but yeah, Twisted Lily is where I got this fragrance. It is beautiful. Mont Sillage is a very, very interesting, unique scent. It's a woody aromatic. Um, what's so interesting about Aviation Club is the greenness behind the fragrance. It's fresh, it's green, it's easy to wear, it's light, but it's unique, it's different, it's unlike anything you've smelled. Uh, it doesn't smell like anything in a, any Sephora, it doesn't smell like anything in any Ulta. You will not find this style done over and over and over again. And that's one of the reasons why I ranked it so high because not only is it a great, great experience when you wear it, but it's a, an amazingly unique experience that people will not know where you've got the scent. You, you won't be like, you won't, people won't know where you bought this. And, um, and that's what I love about this fragrance as well. And um, the ingredients behind this note, behind this fragrance is, um, it, it's basically green notes, woody notes, because <laughs> they don't really want to get they don't want to give you the details. They don't want people to copy the scent, I guess. Um, but you could copy it anyway if you don't know the notes anyway. But anyway, this fragrance was done in 2014, and it has green notes, witty notes, amber, floral notes, leather, metallic notes, coffee, and tobacco. <sighs> I really love this stuff. Um, I'm going to wear this. <laughs> Um, aviation club, and every time I overspray in this area. Uh, anyway, what I like about this fragrance is it kind of reminds me of, imagine you, imagine you took like stems and leaves of a, of a, of a plant and then you crushed it in your fingers and you smelled it. That's what's going on in this fragrance, but in a way that's not as weird sounding as what I just described. <laughs> um, it's just really, really, really beautiful, really unique, really interesting, and unheard of, like, unheard of. I don't think anyone has talked about this fragrance on YouTube. Um, and if there has been someone who talked about it on YouTube, it's probably one or two people, and no one popular, I would imagine. Um, <laughs> They're not sending bottles out to a lot of people. There's no budget, I don't think, for promoting this fragrance amongst YouTubers. So YouTubers aren't talking about it, but I love it. And damn, you guys got to know about it. Mont Sillage Aviator Club. It is insane. <laughs> insane. I get complimented when I wear this all the time. Um, and I know, you know, I, I'm, I work around a lot of people, so and I'll, I'm considered the cologne guy, so people will compliment me if I'm wearing something that they like. And I've been complimented a few times when wearing this fragrance. Mont Sillage is a brand that a lot of people don't talk about, know about. And I have to be honest with you, this fragrance makes me want to try other fragrances from them. I bought two of these. That's how much I like this. Two of them. And look at the dent I put in that, that 50 mil. That's insane. That's insane. I want to thank you, Evan, for putting me onto this fragrance. If you happen to check out this video, I really am grateful, bro. Um, Mont Sillage Aviator Club, Aviation Club number four. All right, guys, so we're getting into the top three. The top three fragrances are absolutely amazing. Um, I've never mentioned one of the top three. My number one fragrance has never been discussed on my channel ever. Um, but I have to tell you, it is insane. It's, it, 
it should be number one, period. Um, so number three is from a brand called Amarud and Amoroud, Amoroud, or Amoroud, is um, the fragrance called White Hanoki. White Hanoki. I am infatuated with White Hanoki by Amarud. Okay, so I bought this fragrance from another store that closed a bunch of years ago, um, Oswald's. And Josie, the awesome, awesome buyer at Oswald's, who now is an awesome distributor of beautiful, beautiful fragrances. I see her at Bergdorf all the time. Anyway, Josie, when I was, I was going to an event, um, me, Carlos, Tiffany, and Steven, they, I think they were doing an event there, and I saw them there, and it was at, it was at, Oswald's that I smelled this fragrance and when I smelled this fragrance oh yeah and I was with Evan too when I smelled this for the first time he actually got 10 mils of this fragrance I, I had to share with them um, this scent is called white hinoki and guys I love hinoki anything 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 with the word hinoki in it will pique my interest and make me want to try it out and see what's going on and this definitely, definitely did. When I smelled it, I was blown away. White Hanoki is insane. It's a woody spicy. Men and women can easily wear this fragrance. It's launched in 2000, it was launched in, 2008, in 2018 um, by a nose named Angelique Nadeau. And the top notes are ginger, blood orange, white pepper, white pepper, pink pepper. You guys seeing a, you seeing a pattern here, right? Um, <laughs> uh, white pepper, middle notes are labdanum, heliotrope, and cinnamon. Base notes are hanoki wood, whiskey, and tobacco. And in case you're all curious about what a damn hanoki is, hanoki wood is basically cypress. It is a Japanese type of cypress, so that's why it is very, very much associated with Shinto temples, um, spirituality, very, very, very beautiful, very clean. This fragrance definitely has a tea vibe, and this is one of the reasons why when I smelled it, I was like, whoa. There's nothing in this fragrance that is overtly a tea note, but when you smell it, the combination of ingredients reminds me of a steaming hot cup of tea. Ginger with ginger. <laughs> um, white hinoki lasts on my skin for about seven to eight hours, I have to say, I absolutely love it. It is an underrated, under-discussed fragrance from a, from, an, a, from a brand that a lot of people know about, but it's not like celebrated. You don't see it everywhere. So I really, really think this fragrance is sick. It could have easily been number one. I think like my top three could have easily been interchangeable with number one with no issue. If I said this was my number one, it would not be a weirdo thing to say at all because it is just in freaking sane. I love white hinoki. Clean, brisk, modern, very, very unique and interesting. If you can, definitely get a sample of it. It is just, it, it's just seriously awesome. <laughs> um, I'm definitely going to check your comments out, guys. Keep leaving them if you feel. Um, I'm definitely going to get back to your comments. Please leave them as you will. Um, please comment on what you're seeing if you want to. I'm really curious to get your impressions if you've smelled any of these fragrances before. I do feel like a lot of these fragrances go unnoticed and unfocused on, um, probably, be because, probably because no one is paying to talk about them. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, but I'm gonna talk about them anyway because I really think you guys need to know about them. Um, they're really, really beautiful. So yeah, White Hinoki by Amarud, an amazing, amazing fragrance at number three on my spring niche list. Okay, guys, so the number two fragrance is from the brand Ubigon, and I just love saying the name Ubigon. Ubigon, that's, that sounds so French. <laughs> it's so French, and it's crazy. Ubigon, the fragrance is Figuer Noir. And this is one of the best fig fragrances I've ever smelled. I'm just going to let you know right now. It's one of the best fig fragrances I've ever smelled. And I own at least 15 
fig fragrances alone. I own more fig fragrances than some people, than most people own fragrances. And this is probably my best fig scent. I would say the, before this, I would say the baser. But this probably is better than the baser. Now, I can't say that. <laughs> mm. I love them both very, very much. Uh, this fragrance I found out about last year. When it first came out, I, was, I had to get my nose on it. Um, Selfridges was mailing bottles. The only place you can get it was in Europe. It wasn't even in the United States for a long, long time. I finally, finally was able to get a bottle when they, um, when they launched in Bergdorf Goodman, to be honest with you. Um, I, got, I, I wanted to get the bottle at Selfridges, but I decided on against it. I never smelled it, and I don't like doing blind buys, so I had to try it first. Thankfully, though, I worked at Berg. Uh, thankfully, I worked at Bergdo Goodman, and this fragrance was launched in the store. And as soon as I smelled it, I bought it. <laughs> My credit card said "plat," you know, because this fragrance is just one of the most unique experiences of fig I've ever tried. Why is this so awesome? Why is this so special? First of all, shockingly, this fragrance was made by my favorite perfumer's daughter. Jean-Claude Elena's daughter made this fragrance. Her name is Celine Elena, and she designed this fragrance last year for Ubigon, and I have to tell you, she put her foot all the way in this bottle. It's so good, it's insane. Um, the notes in this fragrance are fig leaf, cardamom, black pepper, and clove. Middle notes, black fig, iris and jasmine, base notes, fig, cedar patchouli, and candied fruits. Fruits are in the base of this fragrance, but you don't feel like it's a fruit basket. You don't feel like a fruit salad. It's not overly fruity. If anything, the fruitiness of this fragrance, I feel like is coming from the fig itself. And it's not like a coconutty fig. It's not like a milky fig. It's a peppery fig. It's a spicy fig. It's a fig that I can wear to a club. I could not do that before I bought this bottle. <laughs> I couldn't wear a fig fragrance that I own to a club and it would kind of like fit in, you know, it wouldn't. I could wear this to a bar, I could wear this to a club, I could wear this anywhere and it's gonna kill because it's so beautiful, it's so unique, it's so novel. Sometimes when I smell fragrances and I wonder like, how come nothing smells original? I smell a bottle like this and I'm just feeling like, I just feel grateful. I'm just so happy that a scent like this exists and that we can, we can absolutely access it. Um, this is absolutely beautiful. It's a fig masterpiece. I'm just going to say that. I don't use the word masterpiece a lot. I don't throw the word all over the place, but I have to tell you guys, this is, if any, if any fig fragrance was a masterpiece, it could easily be the baser or figure noir. Figure noir is major, 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 major. If you need a sample, let me know. I will mail it to you. Um, also, yeah, and you all know my email address. It's el-aton at themaker.com. Email me, and I will definitely, definitely, definitely send you this fragrance as a sample. Just send me your address, and it's not a problem. Ah, Figue Noir. Woo! Was that an amazing fig? Um, <laughs> it's, it's not, it's... Mm. It's just, it's just really, really, really good. Really, 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 really special take on fig. Um, probably the best fig fragrance made since the baser was launched. I, I don't feel a problem saying that. Oh, because I did like, um, I did like Le Parfum by Klaus Porto. But that's a fragrance that I can't really talk about because you guys can't access the bottle. Only like less than 2,000 of that fragrance was ever made and um, it's unavailable at this point. So I would say that, but I don't want to get you all um, excited about something you'll never be able to experience. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that fragrance is awesome too. If you can get Le Parfum by Klaus Porto, if you can get a bottle, I would consider it. But guys, number one. Please put your email in the comments. Absolutely. Here it is. Um, guys, my number one fragrance is from a house that I discovered at Men New York. Another closed 
fragrance boutique in New York. I mentioned three boutiques in New York that I used to buy niche fragrances from. All three are closed. Men New York, Oswald's, and Twisted Lily. It's a shame, especially that Twisted is closed because that was the only niche brand and the only niche retail store in Brooklyn. That pissed me off when they closed. Um, but I was their last, last, last client. Like, I literally was the last per. I closed that store. I was the last person um, in there when they were, li like, on their last evening of before they closed. And I bought, like, a ton of bottles. And, um, yeah, one of the fragrances that I bought from... Um, <laughs> one of the fragrances that I bought from Men New York was from a brand called Saint Venant. And the fragrance is called 0905. 0905. I know this label looks really beat down. I have issues, but yeah. Um, <sighs> 0905. 0905 by Saint Venant. This fragrance name, I think, is basically an, um, a birthday of one of the founders, which is also kind of interesting that I love the scent so much because my birth date is the next day, 9-6. So yeah, 90905 by Saint Venant. Saint Venant is absolutely beautiful. It, um, it means our poison, his poison, her poison. Um, <laughs> uh, and I gotta tell you, this is my poison. I love 0905. It's an amber spicy scent that easily, easily translate to spring with no issue. It was launched in 2016 and still very few people, very few, very few people talk about this fragrance. I don't know why, because when I smelled it, I knew it was special. Um, I knew it was special as soon as I smelled it. The notes in this fragrance, sage, cardamom, ginger, uh, middle notes of pine tree or pine, lavender and leather, and the base notes, cedar, woody notes and amber. When I smell this, guys, I have to tell you, it reminds me of something apple. It has like an apple, like kind of like a, like a, like an apple fritter type of thing going on. Now, I don't want to make it sound like a gourmand because it's further from. It smells very, very niche, <laughs> but very, very good. I haven't smelled anything like this. Um, 0905 has like a, it, it's interesting because when you smell this fragrance, there's no fruit, no, no fruit at all. Nothing fruity in 0905 by Saint Venant. But when I smell it, it makes me think of apples. I do not know how they were able to accomplish that with the ingredient list that I see. Sage, cardamom, and ginger in your top notes. That's rare. That's unique. That's interesting. Usually you never see that as a top note. Cardamom, maybe. Ginger, maybe. But for, you know, sage, cardamom, ginger by itself, no fruit. When this fragrance smells so fruity, it just shocks me. Really, 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 really shocks me. But it's green. It's clean. It's modern. Sexy. Attractive. Oh my gosh, when I smelled this scent, I was absolutely shocked and blown away about how good it is. And I'm just gonna layer it, forget it, screw it. Oh man. Um, I definitely can smell the leather, the woody notes and the amber. It's fresh, but it's shocking that it's fresh even though it has all those dark, dark notes. Oh man, is it beautiful. Um, when you smell this in the air, and by the way, this also lasts and it sticks. When you smell this in the air, whoever smells this in the air is going to want to know what you're wearing because it is just unlike anything I've ever smelled before. It's unlike anything that you've ever smelled before. <laughs> I can't speak for you, but I'm just saying it's likely very, very unique compared to what you've experienced in fragrance. And when I smell this, I said, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Sign me up. Saint Venant 0905. It lasts. It smells beautiful. Very unique. Very green. I just love, love, love 0905. And I think this would make an amazing number one. Um, and that's why it is my number one fragrance for spring niche perfumes. Again, this is a very, very well-priced fragrance 
Um, it's under two hundred dollars, and um, it's a fifty mil under two hundred dollars. So if you're one of those people who likes to like, oh, two hundred fifty mil, uh, uh, you know, you might not want it. But I gotta tell you, uh, I don't care for. I don't mind spending under two hundred dollars for a fifty mil that no one wears when it's amazing, when it's well done. Um, to me, that's just like a no-brainer, um, an easy and easy consideration. So yeah, guys, if you can, I would so, so suggest trying out Saint Venon 0905. I would so, 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 so get my nose on Forget Noir by Ubi Gong. <laughs> I would absolutely get my nose on White Hanoki by Amarud. Great, great, great brands. Great stuff. You will not smell like anyone. And when you wear those fragrances, when you wear those fragrances, you're going to be a unicorn. Um, these are not fragrances that I would say are, how do you say? I wouldn't say these fragrances are compliment beasts because unique fragrances typically aren't. But, whew. <laughs> When you wear them and you wear them well, when you wear them dressed a certain way, when you wear them, um, a, when you spray them really well and, you know, you walk out the house, you will be smelling better than most people by a lot. I'm going to just put it that way. <laughs> and um, a lot of people smell that on you and notice it and some won't. But, you know, the people who won't likely will be shopping at Sephora. So, yeah. Again, not that that's a big deal, not that that's a problem, I'm just saying that you won't be able to find these fragrances accessible, which is important to me. Um, so let me get to your comments, guys. Uh, let's see. L'air du désert marocain, marocain. See, when I read it, I can say it. <laughs> L'air du désert marocain. Um, let's see now. Uh, du, 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 du. Okay. What is your take on what is your take on Dior Vetiver? Dior Vetiver? Uh I don't know what that is. <laughs> I've never heard of Dior Vetiver. See, now you're making me want to look stuff up. Um Dior Vetiver? That sounds new to me, bro. Let's see. Hmm. Dior Vetiver. Never heard of that. <laughs> um, and I heard of a lot of things, but that's new to me. Um, let's see. What's going on, Fernando? Thank you so much for checking out this video. Chikara, how are you? Always love spring scents. Love white vetiver by Abel Parfum. Abel perfumes are really, really well done. They're really light on my skin, but I really love the way they smell. Cooling down here in Sydney, Australia. Hey, what's going on, Chikara? I'm so, so, so glad to see you all again. Um, welcome. Eugene Black, what are great scents for the Florida heat? Well, for the Florida heat, I probably wouldn't wear Figuera Noir unless the sun went down because this fragrance is peppery and spicy fragrances or, you know, peppery scents when it's like 100 degrees outside is not a good idea at all. Um, a fragrance that I would consider when it's really, really warm, I would consider L'Air des, Le, Le des Alpes Suisse. I would consider this fragrance. I would consider the Colonise by Nishane. Excuse me, by Nishan. Uh, Colonise is definitely an option worth considering if you want to smell amazing in hot Florida weather. This fragrance is just very, very refined. You smell rich. You smell like a mogul wearing this fragrance, and um, it's really, really well done. Um, another refreshing fragrance I would consider for the heat, I think. Saint Venon 0905 could easily be a fragrance you could wear in hot weather with no problem. Um, it definitely is on the, I guess you could say it's on that line. It could be a little too much for the heat, but I probably, mm, 
I would wear this. I really, really love it. <laughs> um, you know what's a really good fragrance to wear in hot, hot weather from the brand Ex Nihilo? It's called Hedonist. The Hedonist. Very, very, very beautiful fragrance if you're into um, niche perfumes. This one is a little bit more expensive though and it is a fresh, fresh experience. I really love the sprayer of Ex Nihilo. Ex Nihilo sprayers are very, very well made. Um, but the Hedonist is a very beautiful, masculine, fresh fragrance. Very, very well done and will smell so, so good in the Florida heat. Good to see you live. Nice suit. Thank you so much, Montrese. I really appreciate you. Samaat. E, what's going on, Samaat? Um, Ola, is that tower fragrance, is, is that tower fragrance anything like Guerness? Hmm. Very good question. They're very different, um, very, very different. So the Guernes fragrance is very floral. It's a very beautiful floral that men can wear without feeling like he's wearing his um, girlfriend or his wife's fragrance. It's a really, really beautiful masculine take on a floral and um, very, very old school style, but you can easily wear it today and it'll translate with no issue. I don't feel like they're very similar at all. Um, I would say that this is a lot more modern and I could, I feel like if you wore this in hot weather, again, you'll also feel very, very refreshed, very cool, very beautiful fragrance. Um, yes, sir. Uh, let's see. Thank you so much. What's up, E, dude? Thanks for keeping it going. I really appreciate you, Papa Bear. You're the man. Um, what do you think about Saffron Colonize? Oops. What do you think about Saffron Colonize? I think it's a little bit more, I think I like it a little bit more than the original. So when I first smelled the saffron, I did not like it as much. It grew on me. I do like the original more for hot weather, but I like the saffron one for fall and winter. It allows you to wear that cologne style in cold weather with ease. So I really, 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 really dig the saffron version. Also the saffron version lasts a lot longer. This on me lasts about six to seven hours, saffron, seven to 10. Um, very, very, very long lasting scent on my skin. Um, it will stay on me even when I shower. So I really do like the saffron version. I think it's a little bit more interesting than the, than the original. So if I were, if, let's put it like this. If I, were, if I were choosing between this and saffron, I would choose saffron first for sure. But I would probably end up getting this one too, like I did. I got this and the saffron uh, because I just love the way they express themselves and I love how they work. Saffron literally smells like a completely different fragrance compared to this, but they have the same DNA. So really, 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 really good stuff. Um, good to see you. Haven't smelled anything from the house of Nishan yet. You have to change that, Cecile. Uh, Cecil, you have to change that. It's absolutely amazing. Nishan is a, is a house that, it's not easy to find Nishan fragrances to try them, to experience them. So they're not, ex they're not accessible, bottom line. But you can easily get some samples from Lucky Scent. I would consider Lucky Scent if you want to get samples of them. <sighs> great, great brand. Absolutely amazing brand. They make fragrances of quality that are that are not just high in quality, but they are fragrances that are credible for niche tastes. Like if you are a person who doesn't want to smell basic, if you're a person who doesn't want to smell common, you go with a niche scent, you go with a Nishan fragrance, you're going to knock everyone out when you walk into the room. It's just next level beautiful. Uh... I mean, what is his email address? So you got my email address, Brooke Booker. <laughs> Absolutely, you're welcome. YSL Rouge Velour is an unknown gem. Oh, Rouge Velour is insane patchouli. Absolutely beautiful patchouli. Beautiful patchouli. Um, and you're so right. YSL Rouge Velour is definitely, definitely slept on. Everyone's focusing more on tuxedo or baby cat and... Um, and maybe even blouse. Blouse gets a ton of love. 
But Rouge Velour kind of gets overlooked. Um, they have a lot of amazing fragrances in that Vestiaire collection by YSL. I think they're overlooked, unfortunately, because, again, people always like to focus on... Um, on the same old, same old. You know how that goes. <laughs> um, where can I find Aviation Club online or in, or in or around NYC? So again, I got my bottle at Twisted Lily, which is a store that no longer is available. But you could possibly go on their website and find that fragrance. Or you can go to the, you know, the Aviation Club, um, excuse me, the Monsillage website. And you'll be able to find it there. It's really, really well priced uh, for the scent. It's on the lighter side, I will have to admit to you all. It's a four hour experience, you will have to refresh, but whew, is it worth the refresh? It's that good to me. Um, yes, have you ever smelled Zaharoff Signature Rose? I have not smelled anything from Zaharoff except for the first fragrance that they launched, um, George launched. Um, Zaharoff, Carlos was a big fan of Zaharoff. So I smelled a few of their fragrances when he was alive. Really, really liked what I smelled, but I haven't smelled anything since my man Carlos left us. So I have not been, I have not been updated on Zaharoff. Unfortunately, it's really hard to sample fragrances from the brand. There's nowhere to smell them in New York. Um, and I don't have great, I don't know George like that, so I haven't received samples or anything. I should reach out and ask, but haven't gotten to it, um, but I'm really excited to try them. I'm really excited to try them. I've heard very, very positive things about Zaharoff. What's your go-to spring fragrance that never fails for you? Again, my go-to fake fragrance, my go-to fragrance in general for spring, I love the Baser. I love the Baser by Dias and Durga. Insanity, in my opinion, in a bottle. Um, absolutely great stuff, but I've been going through this one. <laughs> I've been getting through Figuer Noir, um, Monsillage Aviator, Aviation Club. I've been getting through this Aviator Club, Aviation Club, sorry. Um, I've been getting through a lot of them. Um, look at a dent I put in this Colonie, Colonies A, and I really, really, I have hundreds and hundreds of bottles, and I put a major dent in this, so um, I think there's a lot of really, it's hard for me to say one. I can never name one favorite of anything, you know. It's hard for me to do that. <laughs> I stay watching your old stuff, like, from 2016 and 17. Thank you so much, <laughs> Mr. Calverino. Um, Mr. Calverino. Uh, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Keep those videos in your rotation. I think, I, you know, sometimes, guys, I watch my old videos, and I'm like, damn, that was a really good video. Like, wow, you know? Like, I really, really, really enjoyed some of my, um, some of my videos, if I were to say so myself, you know? <laughs> um, let's see. We need more Cut the Crap episodes. There's been a lot of crap that needs to be cut. Yes, yes. I will be working on, actually, I worked on a Cut the Crap video years ago before I stopped doing videos, and I never released it. I wonder if it's still relevant. One of the, I'll tell you, one of the video, one of the fragrances that I said needed to be, one of the brands that I said needed to cut the crap was uh, Fragrance One by Jeremy Fragrance, so. <laughs> yeah, interesting stuff. Dior Vetiver is impossible to get in the States. Ah, no wonder. I never even heard of Dior Vetiver. That doesn't even sound like it makes sense, you know? Um, <laughs> oh, no. Is there any store selling Saint Venon fragrances? I'm checking their website, and it seems they have no presence in the U.S. Really? Um, no, I never, that's, that's interesting. That's really, really, really interesting. No, I've never, I, I did not, I do not know where you can purchase them in any stores. Um, the store that I purchased it is no longer available. But Saint Venon is getting a lot more attention lately, so I would not be surprised if you'll start seeing their brand much more readily available in the U.S., um, because they're doing really, really well in Europe. 
I would be shocked if I did not, if you were not able to buy a bottle in the U.S. I would be really shocked. You have to go to France to buy a bottle. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, Santal Noir by Dior, not a bad one. Absolutely a good one also. Um, absolutely a good one also. Favorite Nishan A. Uh, favorite Nishan. Um, I love Colonies A. Fan Your Flames is great. Ani is great. Hashivat is great. I think Ani is probably my favorite fragrance from the brand. Um, but then after that, I would say Colonize because I just really, really like that freshness. It's just really, really good. Um, those are mine. But it's hard to say. Yeah, and you put me on to Fan Your Flames, <laughs> Winston. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I think I remember smelling that on you one day. You walked into the store, and I was like, bro, you are filling the room. What is that? And you told me, and I went and got it that same night. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. And yes, you definitely need to. Guys, if you're in New York, I would be so honored to meet you all. Come to Bergdorf Goodman. Come to the basement. Let's talk. Let's chat. Let me give you a tour of the store. You'll smell amazing and you'll, you'll smell amazing fragrances. Bergdorf has some of the most awesome options in the fragrance world to consider. And if you're a guy, never, never visit the men's store for fragrance because you will be sadly disappointed. If you're a man and you want to smell amazing fragrances, you have to come to the women's side of Bergdorf Goodman because the male side is an embarrassment. It just really, really underscores how we're absolutely slept on and not focused on and not thought about. We're like an afterthought when it comes to anything and everything. So um, if you want to smell amazing masculine scents, definitely come to the women's store at Bergdorf Goodman. Leave the men's store alone. Trust me, <laughs> you will be very, very... You, you'll be limited in your choices, and yeah, you shouldn't be limited in your choices. Um, <sighs> yeah, that was, a, that was a wild time. It was the first time I met you. It was an honor. It was an honor to meet you too, Winston. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to have met you, my man. You have been absolutely an awesome, 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 awesome um, member of my community, so it, it's an honor to have met you as well. Thank you so much. And guys, so... That is my top spring fragrances for 2023 niche edition. This could easily have been, I don't even care if it's niche or designer because I probably won't do a designer list because I don't know or have enough designer fragrances that are available still that I think are worthy of your time. I'm just being honest. <laughs> and if I were to do a spring list of designer fragrances my number one would probably be and i'll just tell you right now my number one would probably be h24 parfum by hermes it is amazing amazing it lasts long it's not basic it's not a common smell you'll find in other brands and not everybody knows about it yet to have it so that you smell common. Like, you don't, you're not going to remind people of their ex or dad when you're wearing that fragrance. You have to consider it. It's really, really good. Get your nose on H24 Parfum. It's beautiful. It's, in, it's next level. And that probably would be my number one designer fragrance for spring. I'm going to work on something. I'm going to see if I can pull up something and pull something out of my hat. But I got to tell you, I don't really... I don't, you know, a lot of the designer fragrances that I used to put on my list back in the day, some of those fragrances aren't available as often, as much. So I'm going to figure it out. I'll see what it is. But honestly, guys, I think this list is pretty dope because you don't have to spend above 300 You don't have to spend above $200 for any of the scents on this list. And again, you can also get smaller bottles of them, definitely under 200 bills. And they're amazing. And when you smell them, they smell expensive. They smell very expensive so yeah every scent on this list i think could smell like a three to four hundred dollar experience personally speaking so yeah uh but yeah guys thank you so much for checking out this live please 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 please, please hit up the like button comment in the comment section when the video uploads and it would be an absolute pleasure to meet you all at Bergdorf Goodman, if you all have some time. If you all come to New York, you have to visit Bergdorf Goodman if you're a fragrance fan. And if and when you do, I look forward to meeting you. Absolutely. So guys, I'm about to head out of here. 
So a lot of stuff going on, but so forgive me again for the, for the noise. Um, we're going to try to make this a lot smoother, a lot better next time. So thank you for putting up with the noise. I really am appreciative of my audience. You guys are the best community in the fragrance world, and I'm grateful to have you. My name is E. This is Simply Put Sensa. And I'm simply O-U-T. Peace. Ha, ha, ha.